Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple gift cards to your friends and family this holiday season. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation to today's edition of Ask Ali. I'm Allison Melody. First up, I've got Dr. Cabral answering a listener question about Lyme, leaky gut, and SIBO. Then May from Organifi joins us to discuss adaptogens and how they work in the body. Then I've got Dr. Group on to talk about how to cleanse the body properly. And finally, we're talking to Victoria Moran about the Main Street Vegan Academy. Then I'll wrap up with some personal questions and some life updates. All right, let's dig right in. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. All right, so for this question, I had to bring in an expert. We've got Dr. Stephen Cabral here to answer this question. Dr. Cabral, thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Okay. So this is a Food Heals Nation listener who has become a friend. So she's near and dear to my heart. And she's um, suffering from some Lyme disease. And she's young. And um, she says, just when I started to make some progress with my Lyme, I got diagnosed with leaky gut and SIBO. I just started trying to do a low FODMAP diet, but it's limited as a vegan. So of course, I told her to go listen to your episodes because you do have shows on this, but I would love to just get your thoughts right here, right now on what are some things that she can start doing? Yeah, happy to help. And, and what's interesting is that many of the viruses or diseases out there actually get worse or come about in the first place because of gut-based imbalances. So what I mean by that is that most likely the yeast overgrowth or the candida or the bacteria was already there. And it, what it allowed for then is more intestinal permeability, which means more of a stressed immune system. So gut permeability is essentially when your intestines, which is about 25, 26 feet long, you have about 20 feet of small intestine, about five to six feet of long intestine. When it starts to become permeable, more proteins and bacteria and things can actually escape from the gut. And then it goes right into the bloodstream. And when it goes in the bloodstream, then your immune system becomes activated to a much larger degree, which over time really stresses the body, creates more inflammation and wears you down. The other reason why people end up with candida overgrowth or SIBO when they get Lyme is because they take a longer dose of antibiotics, typically doxycycline or another one that's used for Lyme. Now, the issue though, so either way, you know, we have candida overgrowth, we have bacterial overgrowth, which is sometimes called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is typically where that overgrowth is because the small intestine is not supposed to be massively populated with all of this bacteria. So Mm -hmm. what we have to understand is that by doing a FODMAP diet, which is the fructo, oligo, di, mono, and polysaccharides, those are just different types of sugars that can feed yeast or bacteria, which are actually helpful when you have a balanced gut because they act as prebiotics and harmful when you have overgrowth, is that we have to understand that that is more of a symptomatic-based approach to relieving symptoms. So it's not going to get rid of your candida overgrowth or SIBO unless you stay on it the rest of your life, which is what I always try to share with people. What we need to do is actually use natural biofilm disruptors, which are things that remove the covering over the bacteria and the yeast. 
And we need to use antimicrobials such as clove, oregano, uh, caprylic acid, uva ursi, uh, grapefruit seed extract. There's so many out there that are really, really helpful. And then when we start to actually destroy, kill, so we can combine the diet with those antimicrobials and um, things like fluorofilm, a, a biofilm disruptor, then we start to repopulate the gut with healthy bacteria. So not right away, but then we start to layer in those probiotics first, like a lactobacillus, then more of a full strain uh, dairy-free probiotic. So that's how we truly get rid of it. If not, I mean, you just deal, we just see it all the time. You deal with it for years and years and years, and you end up eating less and less foods, and you're more and more inflamed. So we use something called the CBO protocol. Um, you can look at the ingredients. You can look at the formula. You combine that with a good, healthy diet, and that's really the way to rebalance your gut. Okay. How do we learn more about the CBO protocol? And can you spell that <laughs> so I can put it in the show notes? Yeah, absolutely. So the easiest way is just stephencabral.com forward slash CBO, the two, three letters. And it just stands for Candida and Bacterial Optimizing uh, Protocol. That's it. So CBO. Okay, perfect. I have okay, lots of so free she... podcasts on this as well. And I know that you know, you're welcome to link up that page, but I probably have maybe a hundred podcasts just on digestion and rebalancing because there's four main digestive issues, H. pylori, parasites, yeast, and bacteria. So if you can fix those plus intestinal permeability, I mean, your body gets so much healthier because 80% of your immune system is actually linked to your digestive tract. Oh my gosh, this is such good information. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass it along to her even before the episode airs. And um, a last question. So with the CBO protocol, is that where she will learn how to get the biofilm disruptors and the antimicrobials for that? Yes. And again, like I always say, you don't have to use the protocols that we recommend, but you can actually see how it's formulated. You can say, okay, this is what's going on month one, then month two, month three, because you don't use probiotics right away. When you already have bacterial overgrowth, you remove first and then you start to layer them in. So it's all there as well. Oh, that's so, so important to know. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Cabral. I will put that website in the show notes and pass this information along. I really appreciate this. Happy to help. All right, Food Heals Nation, I'm here with Mae Stagler, CEO of Organifi, who is passionate about wellness and helping you live your healthiest, happiest life. Let's talk about adaptogens, Mae. How exactly do adaptogens work in the body? Like, How do we feel and experience the health benefits of these superfoods and adaptogens that are included in Organifi products? So good. And so importantly, to take a look at understanding how to kind of expect and anticipate the benefits of including superfoods and adaptogens in your diet. Today, as you try a lot of new products that many consumers are trying adaptogens and superfoods for the first time, and I think so important to take a look at this closely and really first and foremost, recognizing that these are whole foods, uh, adaptogens, normally uh, botanicals and herbs and mushrooms and amazingly powerful superfoods to support your body staying in balance and staying in homeostasis. Uh, and that's really like hormone balanced, um, stress resilient state that it naturally can be in. And the body works very hard to stay in that state. So these superfoods and adaptogens really support your body staying in balance. It's kind of like a, an upper hand and a, a little, um, a little support, <laughs> which is wonderful and really powerful. Different than I'll contrast that different than let's say stimulants like caffeine or, um, or even pharmaceuticals that have a, a direct effect not necessarily working with the body, but uh, making a change kind of on the body. So I think really powerfully um, understanding the benefit of adaptogens as taking time, typically like up to 30 days or, or even 60 days of consistent use to help the body come back into balance. It's really working with your body to ideally experience an optimal state of well-being. And as we're talking to new consumers or new customers and community members, I always kind of offer this perspective to take a look at and kind of take take stock in your, you know, how are you currently sleeping? How is your digestion? How is your energy levels as you try on new superfoods? And then really importantly, and, you know, with Organifi, we're really passionate about having research-backed, clinically proven ingredients in our products so that you can feel the benefits of more energy if you take red juice, better sleep if you're taking the gold and, you know, the evening routine of maybe chocolate gold and after dinner or something, or um, the 
stress reducing and stress balancing benefit of green juice with the 600 milligrams of ashwagandha in there. So I think really importantly recognizing that adaptogens and superfoods take time to work with your body and it's really important to consume them consistently. And then really looking to those overarching, I would say like uh, mile markers or like goalposts for optimum health and living, digestion, sleep, energy, mood for hormone balancing. And recognizing that those are the areas that you're going to look to and anticipate feeling the benefit of superfoods. And I'm really passionate for um, kind of educating and supporting consumers, picking products that they can depend on getting results from. And that's like looking for quality, looking for, um, you know, certified um, third party testing with ingredients to ensure you're getting the quality that you're looking for when you incorporate them. And something I'm really passionate about with Organifi. Yeah, well, I appreciate that about you. I appreciate that about Organifi. Food Heals Nation, our body is always striving for homeostasis, that perfect balance, and we can give it the helps help that it needs with these superfoods and adaptogens. So go get your Organifi on at OrganifiShop.com slash Food Heals, and you'll get 20% off your order. May, thank you so much for being here. My absolute treat. Thank you. All right, Dr. Group, you and I are both huge fans of cleansing our bodies. Now, there are all kinds of different cleanses out there between liver and parasite and gallbladder cleanses. I think I've done them all at this point at some point in my life, but you do have a specific protocol of an order that you recommend people do. So I'd love for you to expand more on that. How, what should people be cleansing and what order should they be cleansing in? Yeah, that's really important. I mean, people can cleanse anytime they want to, but I mean, uh, ultimately what we've done over the last 25 years is try to find out what is the best system that's going to be the, the least amount of work for people, but also give people the highest results. And since most of the chemicals and toxins enter through the gut and the gut is associated with all the other organs, we use like to start with intestinal cleansing. And that's the, cleansing the small intestine and the large intestine. And then after that, the toxins usually go to the liver and gallbladder. So the second part that we like to clean is the liver and gallbladder. Do a, a deep purge of that to, to really activate the liver again, activate the detoxification processes, and just clean all that sludge out. It's like changing your oil filter in your car that hasn't been changed forever. And then the third part that we move on to is the harmful organisms. And that can be anything from fungus, mold, worms, um, you name it. Any type of organism that's living in your body that shouldn't be there. Flush all those out of the system. And last but not least, we do the chemical and the heavy metal cleanse. And that's just, you know, we're exposed to chemicals and heavy metals and pesticides and insecticides and stuff like that every single day. We breathe them in, we put them on our skin, you know, they're in the foods that we eat. So the last part would be to just flush all those chemicals and heavy metals out of your system. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I'm a huge fan of cleansing. I believe that it is one of the number one things that you can do to quickly and effectively start feeling better. It's one of the most effective things I've ever done for myself whenever I need to get myself out of a slump or out of a funk and feel better. And then, of course, we also know that it can heal and reverse chronic degenerative diseases like cancer. Like you said, you have a friend who recently went through this and was able to reverse stage four liver cancer through cleansing. So I just think it is one of the most effective healing tools that you can add to your healing toolbox that you can do for your health. And Food Heals Nation, if you're ready for a detox, if you're ready for a cleanse, go back to episode 346 because Dr. Group and I really do deep dive into each of the cleanses like liver cleanses and all the different ones that you can do so you can decide what is best for you and why you need it. If you're ready right now, go to globalhealingcenter.com. You can get all your cleanses, all your supplements, everything you need to boost your immune system, detox your body, and just feel better. Use my discount code FOODHEALS10 and you'll save 10% off your order. Dr. Group, thank you so much for being here and thank you for that discount. Thank you. Appreciate it. Food Heals Nation, this episode of Food Heals is sponsored by Sambuca. Now, fall is right around the corner, and you wouldn't know it because it is so hot here. I don't know about where you are. Nashville is hot, but I love the heat. But fall is actually on its way. So we're looking forward to 
cooler weather, layers, all the fall flavors, pumpkin spice, everything. It's like a mini reset. It's a new season. It's a time to assess your current wellness routine. I love doing this. What's serving me? What's not serving me? Is there anything I can add or take away? What are the things that I need to do in this next season of life for my own personal wellness journey? Well, a new product recently made its way into my life, and that is Sambucol. So I started taking the Black Elderberry Syrup. It's really good, and it helps support my immune system so I can keep doing all the things I need to do, cross everything off the to-do list, stay healthy, stay in flow. It's just a simple act of self-care that I can do without a lot of effort, and it's really easy to add to your daily routine because you can add it to your favorite foods and drinks. So for example, I made a smoothie today and I added about two tablespoons of the Sambucol Black Elderberry Syrup to the smoothie. So the smoothie was strawberries, cherries, and greens, okay? And then of course, I do all my powders and everything like that, my plant-based milk. Today, we have a macadamia milk. Sometimes I use oat milk, just depends on what I've got in the fridge, what's making the rounds, um, some ice, and yeah. Easy, easy, and then I just add all the greens, like I have my bag of spinach and kale and Swiss chard. Okay, so yeah, just add in the syrup. It tastes great. Um, It doesn't add any kind of weird taste. It actually enhances the taste. It's kind of sweet, it's delicious, and it adds an extra kick of immune support, which you know me, I will take all the immune support I can get. Sambucol is made from premium European black elderberries, which are natural sources of powerful antioxidants and key vitamins like A, C, and E. So check out the syrup. It's their original product. It's super versatile in the kitchen. And then of course, if you want something else, a different form of getting that immune support, you can try the gummies, the chewable tablets, the drink powders, the capsules, and more. All of the products are vegan except the throat lozenges, which contain honey, just so you know. But they're all gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free, soy-free, no artificial colors or flavors. And mamas and papas, they've got products made just for kids and babies too. And back to the syrup, I think it's great because you can sneak it in smoothies for your kids. You could drizzle it over like their yogurt or some overnight oats, or you could drizzle it over a dessert because it's just like a sweet syrup that tastes really good. So it's an easy way to get your kids some extra needed uh, immune support and yourself as well. So Food Heals Nation listeners can get 15% off their next order of $9.99 or more at sambucolusa.com by using my my promo code foodheals 15 at checkout. While you're there, you can read the blog. You can see lots of recipes, different ways that you can use Simbucol to make different cool, delicious things. They've got some simple smoothies. They've got mocktails. They've got healthy vegan baked goods. Check it all out on the blog. And of course, don't forget to use my discount code foodheals 15 to get 15% off your order of $9.99 or more. Food Heals Nation, we've got PETA's sexiest vegan over 50. It's Victoria Moran. Victoria, I'm so glad to have you. Hey, it's wonderful to be here. Yes. So vegan to vegan, I got lots of questions, but I want to start out with your main thing that you do besides being an amazing author and helping people with the plant-based lifestyle. What you really do is you have this amazing Main Street Vegan brand that has led to the Main Street Vegan Academy. So please tell us what that is and how I can get involved. I mean, this sounds like amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for asking about one of my favorite topics. When the book Main Street Vegan came out 10 years ago, way back in, in 2012, the publisher didn't want my title. They didn't like Main Street. And I was walking up Broadway and ran into somebody so famous you can recognize them from the back. And that was Michael Moore, the filmmaker, who had liked, oh, yeah. he had liked a book that I'd written earlier, a, a weight loss book that, that had helped him. And so, you know, we said hello. He said, we need to talk about food. So we start talking about food. And one of these phone calls, I mentioned that the book I was writing was supposed to be called Main Street Vegan. And the publisher didn't like Main Street. And he said, let me talk to them. So so there was this three-way call with an Academy Award winner and my editor and me. And he talked her into the title. And then she had to convince the higher-ups. And when she called me back to tell me that that had happened, 
it was like all those uh, bubbles in the comic books popping up around me. You know, there really needs to be a Main Street Vegan podcast. There needs to be a Main Street Vegan production company putting out vegan films. There needs to be Main Street Vegan Academy, training and certifying vegan lifestyle coaches and educators. And I thought, Brilliant. okay, <laughs> so that's kind of the, the prehistory. And what was so interesting, Allison, is that I'd been vegan for a very long time. I, I got to be vegan 1983. So it had been a while for me, even 10 years ago. But my writing had been more in the spirituality and well-being world uh, for several years. And so I didn't know how much of a following I really had in the vegan world for anybody mm -hmm. to find out about the podcast. I mean, to, I'm sorry, to find out about the Academy and, and come to it. But amazingly, they did just from my mm -hmm. newsletter and a couple of podcasts that I was on back then. So we had a wonderful first class and then it was just like, okay, now we need to keep going. Well, we have kept going for 34 cohort courts, number 34, will happen in October of this year, live on Zoom with an incredible faculty of just some of the best and brightest people in the vegan space. So just off the top of my head, uh, Dr. Joel Kahn, uh, the fashion designer, Joshua Catcher, uh, vegan chocolate uh, chef, friend Costigan. Um, <laughs> we have uh, Stephanie Red Cross West of Vegan Mainstream. She's a great business expert. Uh, Chef AJ is going to be presenting for us for the first time in, in this cohort uh, about online video, which of course she does brilliantly. And nice. so what we offer is vegan principles, everything you need to know about the entire vegan lifestyle, every aspect of it, health, nutrition, animals, environment, history. You know, a lot of people think it started with Dean Ornish or it started with PETA when it really started with humans and um, fascinating. And then we have a, a track of um, communication principles so that you get all this information and how can you get it out there in terms of coaching techniques, uh, working with mixed and transitional families, doing public speaking, if you wanna do that, the video, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And then uh, business principles, how to really turn this into a business for those who wanna do that. Amazing. And so, you know, I have people ask me all the time, well, how did you get into podcasting? How did you write a book? I thought they were going to be like, Allie, what time do I take my probiotic? And I'd be like, I'm not a nutritionist. But then I was like, oh, podcasting, speaking, books. Oh, I can help with that. So people are seeking this information and especially in the plant-based world that we're in. And as it's growing and as more and more people are discovering, the more plants they eat, the better they feel. They're they're being called, I think, to kind of create a career around it. So very, very exciting. And I know for you, as for me as well, podcasting has been the most amazing way to get my message out there. And um, a lot of your guests have been on my show as well. So we've got all of that in common. And tell me, so as a member of Main Street Vegan Academy, we get trained and certified as vegan lifestyle coaches and educators. And then what do we do once we're certified? Is it up to us to create that career or is there a curriculum and then you do this path? Like, tell me more about, get, get specific with me. Yeah, no, it, it's very independent. We are there for people afterwards because we're small, we're a boutique course. So I know everybody. We have almost 600 graduates now on 32 countries on six continents. And I know everybody and they have access to the instructors and they have access to one another in a private Facebook group. So in terms of what people do is entirely up to them and usually where it comes from, and this is a great tip whether somebody has an interest in Main Street Vegan Academy or not, and that is that whatever you've done before in your life lays the foundation for what you're going to do next. So if you were an accountant or if you were a mom and you made the best lunches in the whole PTA, it, you take that and you grow with it. You put it into the vegan world. So we do have graduates who are coaching individuals, who are teaching groups, who are podcasting, who are writing books. And we also have people who have started vegan businesses. So we have food trucks, restaurants, 
an award-winning bakery in Miami Beach, L'Artisan Bakery. We have Kat Mendenhall Cowboy Boots out of Dallas, wonderful vegan eco-friendly cowboy boots. V Marks the Shop is a bodega in Philadelphia. Bon Mot Ice Cream is uh, in Mexico City, uh, vegan ice cream. We have uh, Riverdale Cheese on the Lower East Side of Manhattan and another cheese and yogurt company in upstate New York, which is called Bright Life. So people come with who they are and what they have, and then they go out and literally set the world on fire. It, it's just amazing. Set the world on fire for compassion and nonviolence and this wonderful way of life that we have that's so sensible, it makes people healthy and makes people happy. Oh my gosh, you can't see me, but I'm smiling through the microphone because this is like, this is what I'm all about. I love this so much. Um, and so I'd love to hear more about the curriculum. Like, how long does it take? Is it self paced? Is it meetings monthly? Like, tell us about what that looks like. Yeah. Become, yeah. Thanks for yeah. asking. Well, it is absolutely not self paced. Maybe because of my age, I come from the real time generation. And <laughs> the idea of just here are a bunch of videos and learn from them. I know a lot of people can do that. It's just not my style. So okay. it's live and almost in person. <laughs> I mean, it's live on <laughs> Zoom. And of course, um, everything is recorded. So if somebody has to miss a class, they can make that up. If somebody is far, far away, we had a gentleman in Kenya take the course this last time. And although he was a stalwart, he stayed up <laughs> uh, until six o'clock US Eastern time, which I think was, I don't know, three in the morning in, in Kenya. Um, but it's available. So we do everything that we can to make it accessible for everybody. But it's very important to me that this is live, that our students meet our instructors, that they meet one another, that we have breakout sessions so that people can decompress from all the information that they're getting. So we are on Saturdays and Sundays, um, seven Saturdays and Sundays all day. There are prerequisites of reading um, six books on every aspect of the vegan lifestyle, because what happens is that people come and they're already vegans. That's the requirement of vegan over 18, although if you come with a parent, you can be under 18. Okay. But you're already vegan, and so you already know stuff. But what happens is people either know a great deal about health and nutrition, or maybe one aspect of health and nutrition. Maybe they've studied whole food, plant-based very thoroughly. Maybe they've been in the raw food community for years, coming from different places. And then somebody else very much into animal rights and knows all about that and doesn't know much at all about some of these other things, maybe about uh, the environmental impact of, of food choices or um, the zoonotic diseases and some of these other things that all of us, if we're going to be experts on this lifestyle, have to be familiar with now. So we fill in everybody's blank spots and then we give skills and we have practice time so people can practice coaching techniques which of course are essential for anybody who wants to be a coach but they're also very useful for any vegan or any plant-based person who talks with other humans because these these techniques of persuasion of of building somebody up it's all positive with main street vegan academy it's never that we would say to somebody, oh, my, my goodness, don't you, don't you know how bad that is for you? Or don't you know how that animal <laughs> suffered? To, you know, it's like, yes, we know how bad that is. And we know how much the animal suffered. We have that information. But when we are out there presenting this lifestyle to people, we can present them with information while still celebrating them. And, and bringing them up and and bringing them along and understanding that everybody has their process. Yeah, I love that approach. I love the approach of coming from love and education and not shame or anything like that. And I'm I'm the type of person, I know 
a lot about a little and I want to always learn more. And that's half the reason I do my show is I'm constantly learning from other people such as yourself um, that know things that I don't know. And so I love this idea. I'm on the website, MainStreetVegan.net. I'm looking at some of your amazing graduates. You've literally got the creme de la creme of entrepreneurs, coaches, influencers, authors. My friend Julia Murray is one of your featured influencers. She's been on the show before. Anyways, and so I, I just think this is a great next step for anyone out there who's like, I want to get involved in this community. I want to make either enhance my current career or create a new one in the plant-based world. This is the perfect place to start or continue what it is that you're already doing. Victoria, where can everyone follow you, stalk your Instagram? Give us all the good. Oh, bless you. Well, um, you can find me as Main Street Vegan, and that's where all the info about the academy and, and the blog and all things Main Street Vegan. That is uh, Main Street Vegan on Instagram and Main Street Vegan on LinkedIn and Main Street Vegan on Twitter. And you can also follow me uh, on Facebook and on Instagram. Both of those are Victoria Moran Author. We'd love to see you guys. Perfect. I'm going to go follow you right now. (laughs) Thank you so much, Victoria, for being here today. I really appreciate it. Bless your heart. I'll follow you back. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle Lily is breathing. Think about every everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets, right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside, but that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. 
So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. All right, Food Heals Nation, I'm here with JJ Flazanes. And the question for JJ today is, JJ, what is one of your favorite ways to cultivate more self-confidence? Mm, that's a good question. And it's, I'm going to give you like the bottom line, basic answer. Okay. But it's layered in how to do that. So self-esteem, self-confidence comes from knowing, in my opinion, this is my definition, knowing, accepting, and valuing who you are. Mm. So in order to know, accept, and value who you are, you got to know who you are. And that doesn't necessarily mean what others think of you. It's what do I think of me? And why am I the way that I am? And what is it about myself that I value? What is it I'm afraid to allow others to see? So it's doing that self-work you know, there's a lot of people that think confidence is about being on a stage or having a podcast or being able to go on multiple different dates around p- different people and, and, and look like you're having a good time. And what people fail to see is what goes on underneath the surface. A lot of people are out in the world compensating for not being confident, whether it be through making a lot of money or through the way that they dress or the way they promote themselves or talk about themselves. You know, it, sometimes people get like they follow uh, what's like the illusion of someone who's really successful. But I mean, look at, you know, we just had a tragedy over the weekend with a couple star deaths. One of them included, I believe, some drugs and has, and some mental illness. And when we look at, I mean, I remember when Robin Williams died, people thought, well, if he was depressed, there's no hope for the rest of us. And I thought, whoa, whoa, we don't know anything about his life. Mm -hmm. We don't know the inner workings of who he is as a person. It's only the, the show he puts on a very talented show. And, and that was great, but there's a lot, there's several layers of who we are in the world who we are, so who we incarnated as to be in this life. That's another whole ethereal, ethereal level, if you will, which I think is very important to help ground us in this human experience. If there's a bigger reason for why you're here and it's not random and it's not temporary, it gives a depth. It also gives an understanding that you're constantly supported in life by your angels, by your ancestors, by non-physical energy. When you can think that big, of who your energy and how your soul evolves in this lifetime and beyond, then we're not in such a rush to like get something accomplished in this lifetime. And there's no wrong answer. You're on a, you're on a journey. So confidence comes from self-acceptance and, and self-esteem is what that means. Self-esteem. I believe in myself. I love and accept and value myself. So, um, yeah, that would be, and and I know you and I, before we uh, recorded today, we're talking about uh, one of my favorite tools to use with clients, mm-hmm. which is Gay Hendricks' book, The Big Leap, and talking about upper limits. And just to marry those two together real fast for people. So I've been teaching law of attraction for a long time. And law of attraction really is about remembering who you are. It's pretty simple. It's just remembering that you're part of energy, source, creator, God, Buddha, Jesus, whatever. Whatever spirit energy you want to use <laughs> yeah whatever word gets you going and uh and in and, and expands you into all that is and doesn't keep you separate from people but and when you remember who you are and you're in alignment with that and you're at peace and you feel love and you feel freedom that's when your life works easily you're in flow you're in ease you're allowing you're receiving what happens in our lives is we also all often look outside of ourselves for circumstances to make us feel better, to make us know we're on the right track. If something bad happens, we think it's, we take it personally. We think it's about us. We get really bogged down in the world. And an upper limit is a beautiful 
way to look at for those of you that do any kind of meditation, law of attraction, and you think, oh, and you think positive and you say your positive affirmations and you're like, okay, I'm doing all that. Why is it not working? (laughs) Well, it's because um, your upper limit, like we all have a certain temperature gauge of how much love, joy, success, and abundance we allow ourselves to have. And when you want more than what you currently have, you have to stretch that container larger than what you're used to. And that's kind of what an upper limit is. It's where you stop allowing in more success, love, joy, and abundance than you are comfortable with. And the good news is that you can expand that tenfold, but that at every new level, you're going to be confronted with your limiting beliefs. And there are tools, there are ways to notice that, oh, I'm contracting. Oh, I'm having these negative thoughts, these limiting beliefs. How do I breathe through this? How do I, you know, for a lot of people, worry is the way the upper limit. They tell the negative story. Some people get sick and get hurt. Some people get in fights and squabble. Some people criticize and blame. These are all ways in which when you start to feel uncomfortable in receiving more, it's almost like self-sabotage. You sabotage the whole thing by doing these things. And when you can see it coming, then you have, you have something to do about it. And then we can grow into the next level. It reminds me of the quote, and I don't remember who said it. We could probably Google it, but life happens outside of your comfort zone. So if you're living comfortably, you're upper limiting. If you're living in any kind of pain, fear, anger, depression on a regular basis, you're upper limiting. It's when we get uncomfortable that things shift and change and we grow and we expand. But life is happening outside of that comfort zone. So my worst nightmare is to stay comfortable. Yeah, we we can find joy and peace and surrender. But even, and you and I discussed this before recording. I mean, for me, I'm kind of in a dark night of the soul, if you will, right now. (laughs) And uh, in a transition that I don't know where it's going and what I'm really happy about, what I feel really confident about is I am allowing it. I am comfortable in the uncomfortable space of not knowing. I am accepting, valuing, and loving of myself enough to allow myself to not know the answer, to not take action, to not do anything, not to compensate, not to numb it, but to lean into it a little bit and be like, there's a lesson here. There is potential. There is growing, expanding potential happening right now. And I don't know what that's going to look like in a week from now, in a year from now, in a month from now but I feel like I'm in it. And mo- and in this space where most people are not comfortable, I'm just noticing I- I'm, I'm staying present to not upper limit because I know what's coming out of this is my next level of expansion and growth, but I can't rush it. And I think too often we try, we get uncomfortable with not knowing. We, we, we want to do something instead of doing nothing. And I'm not, not doing anything. Obviously we're recording this podcast and Allison's going to invite you to a, a, a workshop, a free workshop we're doing this week. But I've noticed, and I've said to myself this week, I love how I honor my process, which means I deeply love and care about who I am and where I'm going and what I need. And I'm not band-aiding it and I'm not numbing it and I'm not ignoring it. I'm leaning in, I'm taking a breath, I'm checking in. And to me, that's confidence. That's, I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks or says. I told my mastermind last week, I wasn't going to perform for love, for love. And some of them were like, Oh, we totally understand. And others were like, Oh no, no, you're going to pump it up this weekend. I said, Oh no, no, I'm not. I am not performing for you. This is, this is who I am. And I'm going to be completely authentic and vulnerable and present and, and serve you, but I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to put on a show for you. So to me, I think the ultimate, and I don't, and trust me when I say I am I have lots of work to do on myself too. This is not like I am hanging my hat on thinking I have reached the level. No, I got, I got places I want to go. I got things I want to do, but I also love and respect my own process enough and want to be present all the time. Like just to be honest, because I see so many people in the world and I'm sure you can attest to this. You're just sort of running around and they're, they're, they're not, they're dead inside, which is what I said last week, but they're sad, they're anxious, and they're just doing and doing to make up for it. And it's, yeah. that's not true confidence. That's numbing. That's pretending. 
I have certainly fallen into that trap. And to your point, like I'm still on this journey as well, but I think it is when you can be comfortable being uncomfortable, that is true confidence. And when you have nothing to prove, you have nothing to lose. It's like, it's not about faking it till you make it or any of that. It's about just being that present going, all right, this is happening and I'm going to get through it because I always do. And I'm going to get through it with grace and ease. And there's something better coming out of this. And that to me is confidence. And the only reason I can say that is I think because of the amount of large and small traumas I've been through that probably most of y'all listening have been through multiple small and large traumas in your life and you're still here. And that is what builds confidence for me, but we're going to get really actually deep into this conversation. Hopefully we don't talk your ears off for too long, but we might cause it's Allie and JJ, but that is actually tomorrow. That is Thursday, the 18th. And it's going to be at five o'clock Pacific. So that's eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock my time. I am CST now Chicago time zone here in Nashville. And JJ, we're going to talk about how to build self-esteem three ways specifically. I'm going to bust some of my favorite myths and fears and things that we hold on to that hold us back. I'm going to bust them right up, give you some inspiration. JJ is going to give you the ways, the action steps, what you can do to build that self-confidence to heal yourself. And we're just going to have this epic conversation. It's all planned. We have slides for you. Like we are ready to go. Um, JJ, where can they sign up right now? jjflazanes.com forward slash self-esteem. Self-esteem. Well, thank you for answering my question today, JJ. And I'm excited to get even deeper into this conversation with you tomorrow. Food Heals Nation, we hope to see you there. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you enjoyed some of that Q&A with some of my favorite Food Heals Nation peeps. Um, so I did have some other questions come in to the DMs this week, this month. Um, so I wanted to answer some of them quickly here. Uh, I posted recently that I got a new juicer. And the biggest question I got was like, what is your go-to juice? So I think I can give you some of my favorite, not necessarily recipes, but things that I mix together that'll guarantee you a good taste every time. So I'm happy to go through that with you. And um, I can send you the link to the juicer. So let me tell you why I did it, what I got, and what I've been juicing. So essentially, um, I had my travel juicer, and I had that one for a few months while I was in my digital nomad phase where I was traveling. I left LA, went to Austin and Dallas, and then I went to uh, New Orleans. Then I went to Florida for like the whole summer last year. Uh, then I went to North Carolina, uh, stayed in two different places there, then Asheville, then an Airbnb in Nashville, and then I finally got a house like a few months ago. So now I'm settled, um, so I don't need a travel juicer, but also it broke. So I had to get a new juicer. And let me tell you that those few weeks with in between without a juicer was not fun. I was definitely buying my juice from the cute little store down the street from me, um, but that can add up. Even though their juice is delicious and fresh and I love it, it's definitely not kind to the wallet when I can buy a juicer and buy my produce pretty cheaply. You know, Trader Joe's has organic produce, very, very affordable. Um, so try that out. Also, I don't know where the, I need to do some research on this, but I don't know if this is a Tennessee thing or what, but right now for this month of August, all produce, all food with the exclusion of, I think, um, candy and alcohol is tax free this month. It's tax free. So I got the Trader Joe's bill and she was like, look, look, you have no taxes. There's Lily. <gasps> Lily's excited for the no taxes. I'm going to look this up right now. I need to know what this is. Please hold. Bleep. Okay, I'm back. Um, I had to look this up because I was like, I don't want to tell them something that's inaccurate. So it looks like it is Tennessee. I found an article that says starting Monday, so that would have been um, you know last Monday, Tennessee shoppers won't have to pay any taxes when they buy food at the grocery store. The grocery store sales tax suspension holiday begins on August 1st and will continue all month long. During this period, food and food ingredients may be purchased tax-free. The state says you'll still have to pay taxes on alcoholic beverages, tobacco, candy, dietary supplements, and prepared food. 
But hey, my Trader Joe's bill was cheap, okay? Now, they already have inexpensive food, and they have a lot of organic choices. So I'm not complaining. I'm happy. So if anyone else is in Tennessee, buy a lot of food this month um, that you can store and save into the next month, because why not? All right. Sorry, I know I got off topic, but the point is that you can certainly save money by buying a juicer and juicing yourself with your own fruits and vegetables that you buy at the store. Okay. So back to that. So the juicer that I bought, I didn't want another compact juicer because I'm not traveling. I'm settled at home. But I also didn't want a huge juicer because, you know, I'm limited on counter space and the juicer is going to sit on my counter because I use it every single day. So I'm not going to put it away, you know, under the cabinets or whatever every single day and then bring it back out. I'm just never going to do that. So it has to be counter, you know, ready. So I got one that's kind of like medium size. I'd say it's on the smaller side of most juicers, but uh, definitely larger than the compact one that I had for the last few months, or I don't even know now. I'm not last few, last year, 2021, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how much time has passed. Sometimes I forget. Anyways, okay, so I get this juicer, and it is awesome, okay? It was only $44. Okay. If you search for it on Amazon, it's 50, let's see, $54.99. But because I think, because I have that Amazon influencer thing, my link now shows it as 49. So you can get it for 49 instead of 54.99. And then sometimes, I don't know why, it goes down to 44. So it was 44 the day I got it, then it went back up to 49, but then if you're Amazon Prime, it it goes down. And uh if you charge it to the Amazon Prime Rewards Visa card, then you will get 5% back. So that's cool too. So it's like cash in your pocket. So anyways, it is the brand is Housenet H O U S N-A-T if you want the specific model and you want to make sure you get that discount, which is I think 10% off with my link, just DM me at Allison Melanie TV and I'll send you the link to it. And hopefully it doesn't go back up to that price. I need to learn more about being, you know, having this Amazon influencer account and what I can get for you. So uh, just DM me and I'll send you the link. Anyways, okay. This juicer is awesome. I love it. So it take it's got um, a lot of room for uh, putting in a lot of fruits and vegetables in at one time, which is great. And then you can tell that it's getting all the juice out, which is awesome. Some of the ones that I've used in the past, you can tell they're not getting as much juice. This one really works and gets the juice out. It's really, really satisfying um, to put the fruits and vegetables in and see how much juice comes out. And then of course the pulp comes out the other side. Don't throw the pulp away. It's a great thing that you can use because it's still full of nutrition. You can, um, what I do is I will kind of get it out of the thing and I'll put it in with Lily's dog food. And then she's literally eating the fiber from all the fruits and vegetables with her regular food. And she loves it. And she'll eat the whole thing if it's mixed in with her food. So great thing you can give to pets. You can also get it into your kid's nutrition or your own nutrition by baking it into different foods. So you can use it in baking, put it in, and you can make muffins and all kinds of things. Literally just Google juice pulp recipes for baking and all this stuff comes up. I'm not an expert baker. I've certainly done it before, but I just want you to know not to waste that because how amazing is that to use the nutrition in another way and not to have any food waste, right? I I try not to have food waste because it makes me feel really guilty. So I would rather use it for something else. And if you have dogs, you have kids, you definitely can give this to them and you can also recycle it for yourself as well into those baked goods or whatever you want to do. So Google some of those recipes. Anyways, all right, so I got the juicer. It made a ton of juice with not that much fruits and vegetables, so that was exciting. So what was my recipe? So right now, I'll tell you everything I got, and this makes a fabulous, fabulous juice, okay? So I've got my apples, I've got my carrots, and I've got the rainbow carrots, so you know I've got a purple one, a yellow one, an orange one, a white one, right? Uh, So I just do a couple different ones, different carrots, a couple apples, and then I've got the mini cucumbers, so I do one small cucumber. I've got the mixed greens, so that's like your kale, your chard, your spinach, all of that. Um, And then I've got broccoli and a hint of ginger. This is a delicious juice. Let me tell you, 
if you're worried about having a bitter taste because of all the greens, like you're like broccoli can't possibly taste good like broccoli juice. This is why this is why the carrots and the apple will help so much just to take down any bitterness. And I'm telling you, these juices taste so good, you start to crave them. And if you have your fruits and vegetables in the fridge, it's really nice because then the juice comes out cold. So you're just getting like a nice, cold, delicious, healthy juice. Now, if you are using ginger and you're not used to ginger, start with a very small amount. You're going to put whole carrots in and whole apples in, but I want you to start with a very tiny amount of ginger, just like what you can fit in your fingertips just to start until you get used to it. But the ginger, absolutely phenomenal for digestion. And it does like give you a little buzz, a little burn, but that's very good for you. But just be careful if you're new to ginger. And then if you love ginger, if you love spice, then you know what you're doing. Go nuts. Okay. But that's a really easy recipe. So just anytime you're thinking of like, what can I juice? Look at the fruits and vegetables that you have in your kitchen, what you can buy at the store that's organic and affordable, and make a combination. And make sure you include some greens, and then if you want to sweeten it, make sure you include apple and or carrot. Um, definitely apple will help every single time. Carrot helps as well. And then I also like a lot of other ingredients. This is just what they had on hand that was affordable and organic that day that I went shopping. So I will definitely use other ingredients as well when things are in season, when things are on sale when things are organic. I'm not really going to pick out produce if it's not organic at this point because I don't want all of the crap that's sprayed on them. And I still do, of course, wash the fruits and vegetables as well. So be conscientious of that. But yeah, so you asked me for some juice recipes. I don't measure. I don't have a specific one apple, one carrot type of thing. I just put it all in there until it tastes good. Another thing I love to juice is grapes. But the reason I don't include that in my recipes is because grapes are toxic to dogs. And so if you are going to do what I said and give the pulp to your pets, make sure that you juice the grapes separately, right? So you pour the pulp out, give it to the dog, and then juice the grapes because I don't accidentally want to, you know, harm anyone's pets or my own. So grapes are a great sweetener as well. I didn't get grapes this time just because whatever. I don't, I just didn't see them or they weren't on sale or they weren't organic. I can't remember. But the point is those are some great, um, things you can choose. So get some base ingredients, like some greens, some broccoli is always good. So much nutrition in that, so much nutrition in your greens, and then sweeten it up with some grapes, some carrots, some apple, and you can't fail. I promise you'll like it. I promise your family members will like it. Your kids will definitely drink it. They taste really good. And I find that, you know, especially for kids, if you make it really red or if you make it really um, orange, like it's like a high C, right? They want it, they crave it. And so it's a lot easier to get them to drink something colorful than maybe something dark green. I understand that. But the thing is, you'll be surprised, like the more orange carrots you put in, it will overtake the color of the green. So you'd think the green would take over, but you'd be surprised to see how much the reds and um, oranges will take over as well. Oh, oranges, really great addition to your juice. Oranges make the juice taste amazing. So that's a definitely a good one to put in as well. So yeah, if you have any more questions, just DM me. If you want the juicer link, DM me. I got your back. But yeah, I'm having so much fun juicing. You know, the health benefits of juicing are endless. It's good for digestion. It's good for blasting your body with nutrition. It's good for detox and cleansing. It's good for everything. There's absolutely no reason not to juice. Oh, and I forgot to mention about the juicer. I'm happy with the size it fits on the counter, and I'm also happy that it's not hard to clean. It's got minimal parts, so there's a, there isn't a whole lot of complex things where you're like, I don't know how to put this together, because there are some juicers that are so complicated that you're like, I don't remember how this goes. I don't remember where this piece attaches to this piece. This juicer is very simple, very easy. It's only got a few parts, easy to clean, comes with a great brush for cleaning out the pulp on the, you know, on the grinder part. What is that called? I should know, but I don't. Anyways, it is very easy to clean. So I just wanted to recommend it to you guys. All right. Next up, I wanted to talk about, yes, I got censored again. I say it with a smile because how else can you say it? Um, so it was on YouTube this time and I'm upset because of the principle of the censorship, but thank God most of you don't actually listen on YouTube. We get a few listens, but most of our listens primarily come from Overcast and Spotify and Apple Podcasts or iTunes, you know, and so luckily 
it's not going to take away that content from a huge amount of the audience, but it's still very unfortunate that YouTube finds the need to censor us from talking about the healing powers of vitamins and vegetables. It was the interview from months ago with Dr. Peter McCullough. Remember, he was the doctor that was also censored on Joe Rogan's podcast. And on my show, he talked about the at-home healing treatment protocol for COVID. And that is just because it goes against the current media narrative. You know, these big tech companies are taking these things down. And it's really, really unfortunate and unacceptable, in my opinion, Thank God YouTube is not a main source of my traffic. Thank God you guys listen on platforms that haven't censored uh, food heals, that haven't censored these topics. So I'm grateful for that. But uh, yeah, you can't listen to it on YouTube. YouTube gave me a strike, which is like super scary. They're like, strike two. And I'm like, oh boy. So, you know, you can uh, try to appeal it. But I was like, you know what? I don't feel like getting into this argument with them just because most of you don't listen there. But it is disheartening because I posted on my stories, Instagram stories at Allison Melody TV about what happened. And I said, here's the takedown or the, uh, the uh, flag notice where they said, here's the episode we're taking down because it's spreading medical misinformation, which couldn't be farther from the truth. If you remember, Dr. Peter McCullough was the sweetest old doctor who's just, you know, he's like your grandpa telling you the truth about health. He was great. And I didn't even put anything remotely controversial on the main show. I put the only part that could be considered polarizing or controversial on behind the paywall on glow.fm slash food heals, which is the $5 a month club that some of you are members of. And that's where I put, you know, the real juice that he was going to talk about. I didn't even put it on the main show. So they censored like the lightest, most like the content was so light. It's just an unbelievable that they would censor. And then, yeah, so I posted to the stories and I got a lot of support. Thank you if you were one of my supporters, just being like, this is wrong. Keep doing, keep it up, keep up the good work. And then I got some haters and it's just so disheartening that people to this day will say things to me like, stop playing the victim when I'm like, I am shedding light on something that should not be happening and I'm not going to shut up about that. I'm not playing the victim. I don't feel like a victim. I feel like uh, it just makes me want to get louder you know, try to shut me down and watch me get loud. And then, you know, people saying things like, well, what were you trying? You shouldn't have tried to get away with this. I'm like, I'm not trying to get away with anything. I'm trying to help people. My entire goal is to help people get healthy mind, body, and spirit and to wake up to the fact that a healing miracle is always possible, whether you have COVID or cancer or any other problem, right? You have chronic fatigue. Everything is healable. Everything is reversible. Everything has an opposite where you can feel better. And that's why I interviewed doctors and people way smarter than me to shed a light on the truth and how exactly to do it. And so it is a little disheartening that I continually am getting censored left and right on all these different platforms. And most of you are supportive, but unfortunately there are haters and people who are not supportive and say mean things to me. And it's it sucks. I'm not going to lie. Not playing the victim, but it does suck. But don't worry, Food Heals Nation. I will keep on interviewing whoever I can who wants to share the truth about the healing power of vitamins and vegetables, and I won't shut up about it. So there you go with that, as my podcast friend Heather McDonald would say, who roasted me, and I still am her fan. She always says, there you go with that. So there you go with that, Food Heals Nation. All right. A couple of people said, where are you going and can I meet you? Because I had posted on my stories that I was going to Dallas, then Mexico, and then Asheville. Yes, you can meet me in Dallas. I will be speaking at Podcast Movement. It's one of my favorite conferences. We have the best group of people that get together. And um, if you want to join us, just DM me and I'll send you the link. I don't get a commission. It's just I think they give me like 50 bucks off or something. Uh, So if you want to join us in Dallas, I would love to have you. Let me get the dates. I meant to pull them up (laughs) before you. Uh, That It's the end of August. So it's the end of this month. Let's see. It starts on August 23rd, so I'll be flying in August 23rd. I speak on August 24th at 2.45 p.m., and then it goes until the 26th. Every night, there are these cool, crazy, amazing parties sponsored by Paramount and iHeartRadio. Like, it's a big deal. It's really fun. You can definitely meet me there. We can hang out. Um, I can introduce you to other amazing people. So come on down, even if you don't have a podcast, but you have a maybe you have a small business and you want to get interviewed on podcasts, or you just want to meet amazing people who are doing cool things in the world. Whatever your goal is, if you want to hang out, yes, we can hang out in Dallas. 
I can't hang out in Mexico because I'll be at a surprise birthday. And then Asheville is a wedding. But uh, if you come to Nashville, we can hang out there. We'll do a meetup, whatever you guys want. Just let me know. And, uh, you know, I know a couple of you has said, like, I was going to meet you at your book tour, which I appreciate so much. And then book tour was canceled because of COVID. And I never redid it because it seems like, you know, that book came out in 2019. It's been so long now. So I'll have to write another book or do a part two with all the new stories that I have and uh, do some sort of book tour then so I can meet all of you. But if you are in Nashville, I met a, a few of you in Nashville. I'm so grateful. I love you guys. I'll have to do a meetup here. So if you are in Nashville, um, just shoot me a DM so I know. And then maybe I can put up, put together a meetup for us. Just, you know, whoever wants to hang out, we'll go to Avo or do something, you know, in the, one of the plant-based restaurants, we'll have a, a meetup or something like that. But yeah, come see me in Dallas or hit me up if you're in Nashville. And, uh, if I, whenever I go anywhere and I have time, I'll let you know so that we can hang. Cause sometimes I miss you guys when, I'll post after I get back from a vacation, like when I got back from Vegas and, you know, someone was like, oh, let's meet up. I would love to take you to this restaurant, blah, blah. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That was a week ago. Like I'm already back. So, um, yeah, I'll try to keep, keep you guys informed if I'm going to be somewhere and we can always meet in person and talk and chat and have a blast. I love um, meeting all of you and I'm so grateful I've gotten to meet so many of you throughout the years in person, online. Some of you are members of my Food Heals You. Some of you have become clients. Some of you have become close, close friends. So I'm grateful to all of you. And yes, I'd love to see you in Dallas or Nashville or anywhere in the world. We will meet one day. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Ask Allie. I will see you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.